Hello everyone. So, in the last class, we learned to understand reaction rates by the activated complex theory. Right. Now, further, two scientists, Mark Trotz and William Lewis, gave another theory which was called the collision theory, which deepened our understanding about reaction rates. And in today's class, we will learn about this theory which is called collision theory. Now, to understand collision theory, let us take an example of this reaction where A reacts with B to form product P. Simply, this is a bimolecular reaction occurring between A and B. And A and B can be anything from atoms, ions to molecules. The first point of collision theory tells us that reactants have to be assumed as hard spheres. Simply meaning that these reactants A and B will behave like these rocks A and B. Now, the second point of collision theory tells us that for a reaction to occur between A and B, A and B must come close to each other and collide or crash into each other leading to the formation of product. Simply meaning that these two rocks A and B have to come close to each other and crash or collide with each other in order to form the product now, we know that for P to form, collision is necessary, right? Without collision, product P will not form. So, it means that rate somehow depends upon these collisions, right? But, how exactly does rate depend upon collisions? Now, in order to answer this question, we need to take a made-up value of rate for this reaction where rate equals N moles liter inverse second inverse. Carefully notice the units of this rate because these units tell us that N is the number of molecules, atoms or ions in moles reacting per second per unit volume which is equals to 1 liter. So does this give you any hint? Well, this does give a hint and it tells us that the rate actually depends upon the number of collisions occurring between reactants per second per unit volume of the reaction mixture and these number of collisions are called collision frequency and denoted by the letter Z. Therefore, rate exactly depends upon the number of collisions occurring per second per unit volume which is called collision frequency denoted by the letter Z. So, for a reaction between A and B to occur, A and B just need to collide with each other, right? But is this collision sufficient to form product P? Well, to understand that, consider these rocks A and B being brought close to each other slowly and steadily until they touch each other. And at the point where they touch each other, that point is the point of collision. Now, do you observe the formation of product P here? No, right? At the end of collision, we are again left with reactants A and B. Then what can we do in order to form product P? Well, for that, consider this second case, where A and B are brought close to each other at high speed with high energies. And when they collide or crash into each other, they are broken into multiple pieces leading to the formation of product P. So the question that comes here is that, what was different in the second case that led to the formation of product P, which was not present in the case 1? Well, the only difference is that in the second case, both A and B collided with each other with high amount of energy, right? So, reactants also, just like these rocks A and B, need to collide with each other with sufficient kinetic energy in order to lead to the formation of product P. So, what is this sufficient kinetic energy? Well, you'll be surprised to know that this kinetic energy is nothing but activation energy Ea about which we have already studied in the earlier classes. So, product P will form only from those collisions in which the reactant molecules have kinetic energy greater than or equal to Ea. Right. So, rate in a way depends upon the number of collisions in which the reactant molecules have kinetic energy greater than or equal to Ea. So now, how to find this number of 
molecules, atoms or ions having kinetic energy greater than or equal to Ea? Well, try and remember because we have learned how to calculate these number of atoms, ions or molecules in a previous class, right? Because there we have studied that the fraction of atoms, ions or molecules having kinetic energy greater than equals to Ea or total energy greater than equals to Et is given as E raised to the power minus Ea by Rt. And only these fraction of molecules, atoms or ions will lead to the formation of products, right? Therefore, rate also depends upon E raised to the power minus Ea by Rt. So now, both reactants A and B have sufficient energy for a very good collision to occur. But is this condition also enough? Well, to understand the final condition to form product P, again consider these two rocks A and B moving towards each other with very high energy like this. Carefully observe what happens here. After these two rocks A and B touch each other, again we are just left with A and P and no product P. So what we can do here so that we get the formation of product P? Well, in order to do that, both these rocks A and B have to collide with each other in the same direction head on and be broken into multiple pieces in order to form the product P. And because this collision in the first case was not in the same direction, product P did not form. So this brings us to the final point which leads to the formation of products in collision theory. And that final point is that the reactants have to collide with each other not only with sufficient energy but also with proper orientation and direction and only then products will form. Now in order to understand what is this proper orientation further, let us take the example of this SN2 reaction occurring between methyl bromide and hydroxide anion leading to the formation of methyl alcohol. We know that methyl bromide has a tetrahedral structure like this. Right. Now suppose the hydroxide anion approaches methyl bromide from the side of bromine. You will notice that as it approaches, no reaction will occur between the reactants and we will not get any product. But if the same hydroxide anion approaches from the back side, that is the side opposite to bromine, then that hydroxide anion can attack easily carbon and displace bromine, leading to the formation of methyl alcohol. So, in the first case, the direction or orientation was improper because of which the reaction did not occur. But because in the second case the direction and orientation was proper, the reaction occurred leading to the formation of products. It is exactly this by what we mean proper orientation. And this proper orientation or direction is taken care of by a factor called P, which is called the probability or steric factor. And this factor P denotes all the collisions occurring with proper orientation. So in a way I can say that rate also depends upon P. So we can easily conclude that for products to form between collision of reactants, these reactants should have sufficient kinetic energy and also these reactants should have proper orientation. So in a way we can say that collision between reactants having sufficient kinetic energy and proper orientation to break bonds in reactants and form bonds in products only lead to the formation of products. And these collisions which lead to the formation of products are called effective collisions. Therefore, it is only effective collisions that lead to the formation of products and all other collisions do not lead to the formation of products. Now, let us take this reaction where A reacts with B to form product B. If you notice that this reaction is a bimolecular reaction where two molecules A and B react to form product B. Now we will use collision theory in order to find a rate expression for this reaction. From collision theory we know that the first factor on which rate depends is ZAB which is the collision frequency between reactants A and B. The second factor on which rate depends is 
e raised to the power minus e a by r t which is the fraction of molecules of a and b colliding with each other with sufficient kinetic energy and the third factor on which rate depends according to collision theory is capital p which is the probability or steric factor so the rate depends upon all these three factors according to collision theory so if we club or add up all these factors rate totally will be equals to p multiplied by z a b multiplied by e raised to the power minus e a by r t and this is the expression of rate according to collision theory so the rate expression according to collision theory looks somewhat like this but do you remember that we have also learned another expression for rate constant from arrhenius's complex theory which looks like this well if you carefully compare both of these equations you will notice that the term e raised to the power minus e a by r t is common in both of these equations even the term a in the arrhenius's equation is quite similar to the term z a b in the rate expression from collision theory the only difference lies in the extra term p which is the probability factor so the collision theory tells us that not only the reactant molecules have to collide with sufficient energy ea they need to collide in proper orientation according to the factor p so this collision theory seems too perfect right well remember every time that in chemistry no theory is perfect and even this collision theory has its own drawbacks the biggest drawback of this collision theory comes from its first point which tells us to assume reactants as hard spheres but reactants in reality are not hard spheres like take for example this reactant of methyl bromide which we used in our sn2 reaction example we know that this methyl bromide has a tetrahedral structure therefore this methyl bromide is not spherical right therefore this collision theory completely ignores the structural aspects of reactants therefore it is the biggest drawback of this collision theory further details about this collision theory and its more drawbacks you'll be studying in your higher classes so in today's class we learned about a theory called collision theory and this class marks the end of our discussion about all the concepts that you need to learn in the chapter of chemical kinetics in the next class we will apply these concepts into solving questions which have been asked in competitive examinations but before we do that let's do a quick recap of what we have learned today collision theory assumes that the reactant molecules are hard spheres A reaction can only occur between reactants when these hard spheres or reactants collide with each other. Thus the rate depends on collision frequency z. To form products the reactants should collide with total energy greater than equals to et or kinetic energy greater than equals to ea. So the rate depends on e raised to the power minus ea by rt. To form products reactants should collide with proper orientation or direction. so the rate depends on orientation or probability factor p according to collision theory rate of a bimolecular reaction where a reacts with b to form p is given as rate equals p multiplied by z ab multiplied by e raised to the power minus ea by rt